I'd like to call the meeting to order, or it's actually the town forum to order. It is 6.30. Um, so do we have any additions to the agenda for the town forum? No. Do we have public comment? Of course, this is public anyway. Uh, no, we'll say no. And now we have a review of and discussion on 2024 town meeting articles. Public comment will be allowed on all articles. The first thing that we have for an article is Article 2, which is Town Officer Reports. So, it's been our custom in the past to go through the Select Board Reports. Page 14 on the Town Report. <laughs> um, so, basically I scroll down through it, though, does anybody, has anybody read it, or do they have questions, specific questions before I go through it, or would you rather I went through it first? I don't hear much. Or forever, or forever hold. Forever yes. hold. <coughs> yeah. I have a little bit of a question. Oh, that'd be perfect. This is interactive. I like it. Um, Could you say your name for the record, please? Yes, Michael Thompson from uh, from uh, East Montpelier from uh, Cummings Road. Yeah. It's a little bit of a process question. This might not be the appropriate time to say it, but I'll say it anyway since I've got the floor. Um, why doesn't this meeting take place tomorrow at town meeting? Why not combine the two? What's the purpose of having this meeting today, this evening, and then town meeting? I guess I understand the logic, so this comment and then vote. But so I think that statutorily we're required to have the town forum. Oh, I see. Yeah. And separate from town forum. Yes. From, okay. Yes. Yep. And it has to be within a certain amount of time of the town meeting. Yep. Got yep. it. Yep. Thank you. And okay, so to expound on your question. No, you're not asking me to, but I'm going to anyway, because yeah. I like to talk. Yeah. I like to hear myself he talk. Does. <laughs> <laughs> Is that we used to have the town forum at the elementary school on Saturday, but it was really, really poorly attended. Uh, and it was hard to ask all of us to give up our Saturdays to stand up there and nobody came. Sure. So then we moved to doing it at our regular select board meeting on, on Monday evening before the town meeting. So as you can see, the place is not crammed with people. Yeah. Right. But to, to expand upon what, what you're saying, yeah. The, I mean, basically the purpose of of this is just to go into more depth. Yeah. But any questions that come... To go into any come, depth. What? To go into any depth. What do you mean more depth? <laughs> well, I mean, is, isn't this usually for... Asking questions. Yeah. Right, but some of these same questions can come up tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, but some of the stuff you don't discuss. I mean, all these articles, do we? Yeah, they can be brought up for discussion. Well, yeah. the budget, oh, I guess we can discuss them all, all yeah. the articles. Right. 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 This is kind of for a time we couldn't, but now. Yeah, yeah. one time we couldn't, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I thought that was kind of, yeah. the, the pre-meeting was to yeah. expand upon more, yeah. and just especially if you're kind of new to town or, or issues that you really want to find out a lot more in-depth information rather than talk about it for 20 minutes for background. Is, isn't, am I correct or not? Yeah, I, yeah. And it's but been, you kind of wonder why we do have it, because you could discuss them all at town meeting. And it's been helpful to us in the past sometimes, I know. because we've gotten questions that right. we don't know the answers to. And then to. we, then then we, we go home and research. we figure it out, yeah. and we call each other desperately on the phone. Do you yeah. know the answer? <laughs> <laughs> but we might make up an answer at town forum, and then we oh, Jesus, that wasn't the right one. So we go home and, and you know, get more accurate. Right. That's what you're going to do tonight. Absolutely. I'm not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> Makes sense. Thank you for, for yeah, the yeah. answers. Yeah. Thank you for asking questions. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions before we kind of go through the town report? Our town select board report that's published in the town report on page 14 and 15 and, <laughs> and 16. I'm reading it on here. Okay. So we have a few new members on the select board. Um, Zoe's been filling in for uh, Judith, I believe. And then we got Scott on the board, who took Amy's position. I ran. You ran. I wasn't there. Right. I, I ran. Yeah. I was, I was elected. And was there any, somebody else? Just those two? And Nick, well, Nick is Nick on the Oh, Nick. Is Nick. Well, board. he's just been appointed like this Zoe, year Zoe was to take yeah. John Jewett's. Yep. As, as was Zoe. Yeah, as was Zoe to take Jewett's position. So ever-changing faces on the select board. 
Yeah. Uh, and then we have a new, had a new municipal assistant, Jessica Adams. Then we have Patricia as the municipal coordinator. And then Patricia is leaving. And we have somebody else we just hired. And we have a new zoning administrator because Tyson had to go help rebuild the business, Capital Grounds. And we have Michaela on the zoning, zoning administrator. Um, I guess that's it. And the road crew doesn't have much different, many different members. We have part-time road crew, Steve Liebenberg, just part-time. And of course we had the flood that um, Gina's been working on with FEMA. We had, we were lucky we did not get the flood problems damage that Callis had in other towns. We still had enough. We had enough damage that um, it's been quite a process for the town road crew to fix everything up and not everything's fixed yet because we're waiting for FEMA to help us out with this and that. So that's an ongoing process. Um, so we have spent some ARPA money. If anyone has any questions about ARPA, um, here, there, and everywhere, but I'm willing to answer questions about that without getting too specific at the moment. And the other project, of course, is we're, we've um, got some sketch plans coming f to replace the town garage, which we would like to do, but of course that's subject to approval of the townsfolk. So there is information coming on the project, but we don't have much yet. There's still a, uh, still developing the sketch plan. Um, and that's about it. One thing that um, our current town administrator has really helped us with is budgeting. So we have a fairly small increase in our costs, budgeted costs, which has been, um, which is a really good thing. Uh, Gina is um, our town administrator and has done a great job with our budget. It's kind of so remarkable. Very, very it's good remarkable job. remarkable the, um, what our increase to the taxpayers what we're recommending. It's, it's small, remarkable. and thank God it is, it's because remarkable. the school is tough. But um, I really like to applaud our town administrators off our efforts. <laughs> Done a great job. So um, I think that's it. I'm I'm ready to answer questions. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Great. <laughs> a lot of people. So. That was Article 2. The next one, Article 3, is replacement of town garage. Any questions? Okay. Is that, I have a question. Is that the town garage on Templeton Road? Is yes, it is. Road? And it's small. It was originally built part of it in the 50s, I think. It's been added to multiple times. Um, it should be replaced. It's expensive. Is it going um, to be in the same place? Yes. Yeah, same location, you know, tweak it a bit, maybe closer to the road. Um, it may be um, slightly configured differently, it'll be bigger. Uh, there may be solar panels on the roof. We're, we're proposing that it would be there. I mean, this is a, nothing's a done deal. Yeah. It has to come to a vote. And as a bond issue. Recording in progress. <coughs> okay, what? He's reporting us. <coughs> okay. So yeah, it, it would, it would be roughly the same place. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any other. I don't see anybody's hands up. So the next article is the FY 2025 budget. We would love to answer questions about the budget. I don't see any. Do I, are there any there? Okay. I don't see any. Um, article five, property tax protocol. This is when you pay your taxes. The date, the dropping in the door, when does it count, when does it doesn't count? <laughs> Nothing. Don't be late. <laughs> Please don't be late. Of course <laughs> But we always ask, what's late? <laughs> uh, okay. Article 6. Kellogg Hubbard Library Appropriation. No questions? Article 7, Four Corners Schoolhouse Association Appropriation. No questions? Article 8, 
Eastbound player signed post appropriation. Nada. Article 9. East Montpelier Trails Incorporated Appropriation. Hearing nothing, I will go to the next article. Montpelier Senior Activity Center Appropriation. There will be somebody at town meeting to, dis to answer any questions about this, I believe. Usually. Usually yeah. there is, and they said this year that there would be. Mm -hmm. Um, the next article 11 is Twin Valley Seniors Incorporate, Incorporation, Incorporated Appropriation. Um, there's usually somebody at town meeting to answer questions about Twin Valley. Mm -hmm. um, article 12, Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice Appropriation. We have somebody from there here to answer questions tonight. Oh, tonight? Yeah. Oh, on the yes. Zoom? Yeah. My board. Um, this is Aaron Clark, and I'm a resident of East Montpelier, but also a nurse at uh, CVHHH. So I don't think that we'll have somebody at town meeting to represent. Um, but if anybody has any questions, or if you want any uh, input on the significant contribution that CVHHH makes to uh, the East Montpelier community and the care of its residents, I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, I think that um, you did make a presentation to the select board um, back yes. when you came in. And um, we, as a select board, are probably can answer some questions if they're fielded to us at the meeting. And um, I feel pretty strongly that this is a very um, worthy um, appropriation for the town or ask of the town. So I know that I will answer any questions I can at the meeting. So if no one's there, we can we can we can we can do something positive. <laughs> so, okay. Can I can I ask one can I ask one question? What is yes. your new what is your new address? I just out of curiosity. For CVHHH? Yes. Um, so we're still at six hundred Granger Road. Um, okay. Technically in Berlin, but our address is Barry. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? And the report's on page 85. Yeah, it's in the town report, so. Um, so I'm going to move to Article 13 if there's no more questions. Article 13 is the Rural Community Transportation Incorporation, Incorporated Appropriation. That's the bus service. Um, no questions. Don't see any. Uh, Green Mountain Transit Appropriation. What's the difference between the Green Mountain yeah. appropriation here and the one on the next one? Okay, page? that's where they go right to people's residences. Uh -huh. It's a different service. Um, and bring them to wherever they need to go, seniors yeah. or other, <coughs> other people that don't have a way to get somewhere. Okay. Um, that's different than the bus service that operates for the public, the general public. So that's where the two differences are. So Article 13 and 14 really go together. They're covering the same service along Route 2. It's just that RCT uh, runs some of the buses and GMT runs uh, the rest of the buses on that route. And then, as Seth said uh, in Article 15, it's a completely different service. It just happens to be run by GMT as well. Yeah, that's that's in embedded in the funding request, the one that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Colin? He said that we could go back to people's health and wellness and Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice on those pages. Why is there no dollar amount listed on pages 82 and 83 for an appropriation? And the others all seem to have dollar amounts. If you go to page 82. Yeah, I'm going to go to 82. Two, maybe, I don't I don't see a listing on either of those pages for a dollar amount. Huh. I think it, Scott, yeah. I think it has to do with the fact that it goes to all the towns and some dollar amounts are different for different towns. But, so how are we going to vote on something that we don't have a dollar amount on? What it, are you doing it's, it's in the town meeting morning. Oh. Yeah, 
It's not oh, a it was, oh, it just wasn't published in here. Right, it's not published in the okay. report. It's, 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 publi it's published in there in the warning. The report's not specific to each town. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's called you. efficiency score. Okay. Okay. You push the button and it goes to all the towns. <laughs> uh, all the others have, have a dollar now. I know that. <laughs> page nine of the report has a warning. Uh, yeah, page nine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> sure. That's okay. Okay. So can I go back to where I was? What's that? Do you know whether they plan to change their fees or um, any of the fees for ridership? I don't think they are. I mean, that's the impression I got when they came in, mm -hmm. um, that they weren't changing their fees for ridership. Do they even charge? They RCT haven't been does. charging since the beginning of COVID. Yeah. And I think GMT did not rule out starting to charge again. They but did start to charge. They did their, start their to charge new, again. I think their new position is $2 oh, per ride. Okay. Oh, GMT is doing that? I okay. believe this one. Isn't that what RCT charges? RCT has, since before COVID, gone charge free. Right, okay. Yeah, they, yeah. Their rationale was they thought they could increase ridership <laughs> right. by, uh, and the charges to passengers <coughs> were a pretty small amount yeah. of their Percentage. total income. Right, yeah. right. I think that the individual that was in here was talking about they were going to institute a fee at some point. Or Which they have. Right? GMT. Yeah, they, Not they, right. they, yeah. they announced it recently. I believe it's two dollars <coughs> for every ride. It used to be four dollars for a link uh -huh. ride, which is a farther distance, but I think I heard that they're gonna try two dollars for any ride. Okay. <coughs> okay, is that is that clear? Uh yes, verification? Thank you. Okay. Um Okay, so the next is Article 15, Funding Request Study Committee Recommendation for Appropriations to Organizations. And that's a lot of organizations. Um, so if you want to go through them. Can, can I ask you a question? Yeah, you sure can. Can you provide a little background? It seemed to me... Odd when I look at that, and you know, very sometimes very small amounts to, yep. to different nonprofits. Clearly, they're serving uh, members of the community. If that part makes sense. Um, but I wonder the history of, of how that happened that, that we're kind of making appropriations for the town in such small amounts to all these different organizations. I don't know. I guess so, okay, so, so what happens? What's happened is yeah. they were all. Instead of just voting each one individually, yeah. because as you can see, there's a lot of people, a lot of organizations asking for small amounts of money. Right. It got put into the funding request totaled. Right. So and they and they put a cap on. Yeah. So it can't go over twenty five thousand dollars at this point. It used to be ten or fifteen or something. Ten. Yeah, ten. But then they raised the cap on. So now every year the funding request committee, or it's just town people, they come in every year. Oh. You know, what do you? What, how are we going to do this? Because sometimes you get more and more requests. Yeah. So basically, what you have to do is you have to kick out a big one, and that gets a standalone, okay? And then the small ones still stay in there, and you just keep them under the twenty-five thousand. So that way, you don't have to vote on each one individually on the floor. That makes total sense. Yeah. Understanding that there's yeah. a, basically a budget to start with a cap. Yeah. Can, yeah. So, if, so if the cap would have been, so in theory, if the cap would have been a hundred thousand. Yeah. Everything would have gone under there. But the, but the thing is that um, you want to, anything over 25000 goes to Australian Bound. Right. <laughs> so, that makes sense. yeah. Thank you. That helped. Yeah. Okay, so do we have any questions about these requests specifically under the funding request uh, total amount here? There's 33 requests. So, I believe we were told uh, by the Funding Request Study Committee that every one of these organizations uh, got what, in this list, got what they were asked, asking for. Well, a lot of them didn't ask for any more money. Exactly. Which was kind of surprising. Yeah. Now, what you could do on the floor, and this has happened before, is you could pick out one of these organizations, and you could make a motion, which happened, mm -hmm. and say, I'd like to give blah, blah, more money. Or less. Or less, mm -hmm. right. right? And that gets to be complicated, but it has happened, right? So, interesting. Yeah, you can't pull something out. 
Yeah, you could pull it out and say, I want to give them another thousand bucks. Yeah, let's hold on. We do have less than eleven hundred dollars between know. the total I know. here I know. and the ceiling. Yeah, you 25. couldn't push it over the cap. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. And some of these organizations I know they used to many years ago are required to obtain money from their towns. Yeah. That they serve. That they in serve. Order to get like grant yeah. money or whatever other money yeah. that they have. Right. Yeah. So, any questions on the funding request um, committee's recommendations here? I don't see any. Okay. Um, and the business? We have a question about um, page 47 of the town report. Okay. We just don't know um, what the conservation fund is and what the purpose of that is. The conservation fund. We assume those are conserved lands, but but there's no there's no um, narrative to explain what those are. I believe we have somebody in the Zoom who could explain that. Well, I can start on and then so on 27. You are. I'm looking at 27. 47. Oh, 47. Oh, sorry about that. So anyway, the fund, the conservation fund, <coughs> was set up to match. A request, say, from VHCB, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, and the land trust. So, say, say somebody wants to conserve land in East Montpelier. So, the land trust says, okay, we'll give you $300,000, but you're going to have some money come in from the town yeah. for to help, to show that the town is behind this. Yeah. So, that's why we have money in the conservation fund. Because someone could, I mean, it's happened many times in East Montpelier, and there's a list of the conserved properties in this. I'm not sure which page it is. And it lists the properties and the money that was given to them. And then they pulled in money from the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board or the land trust. Yeah. Okay. Is it a percentage? or what, No, usually a percentage. What to, what to I don't know how they, is, I don't know how they get that. Does, does anybody know what, how they get that amount? I think it varies from project to project. Yeah, I think it does too. I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's um, <coughs> thirty-two thousand in nineteen ninety dollars right. for the first one, and uh, five thousand in twenty twenty dollars yeah. for the most recent one. Yeah. So, so if a new one came up, <coughs> would it come to the town yeah. vote, or what, what would happen? No, it would come to the conservation fund committee. Got it. It is a committee of people that would make that decision. But that's an open public meeting, so people can come to the meeting and express their dislike or like or whatever, or their support yeah. of the project. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. A, a little clarification, too, is that uh, we tried to keep that fund at around 40000 from way back, and we'd spend it down. We didn't want to ask too much of the town. Uh, we'd spend it down on, on worthwhile projects, and then uh, as we needed it, we'd ask for more. But, of course, it had to go through the select board. We we're advisory to the select board, so we haven't asked. I'm not on the board anymore, but uh, or on the committee, but we I think we've been pretty uh, responsible in asking for what we need, and I think we've done a lot to uh, help keep East Montpelier looking pretty rural and nice. So uh, it's been a good it's been a good fun. And I can comment on that also. Uh, it's my understanding that every project with um, with the land trusts. Um, with, with any land trusts, are, they're very competitive. And we have a beautiful town, but th there are lots of beautiful towns in Vermont. And so they look at what they can do in terms of putting a budget together. Can this town, can this town assist us in putting a budget together? And I know East Montpelier Trails also always had money that we contributed to every one of our um, to the pro to projects that we participated in. So it just makes it's I don't know. We used to say sweetens the broth. It it makes it more doable because they look at us as a town that is. This isn't. We aren't new to this, and we're happy to to move on it if we need to. Charles and Nona, would you be so kind as to state your names for the record? Oh, oh. sorry, Charles Johnson, Nona Estrin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. So one, one more question again, Michael Thompson from East Montpelier. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a reactive fund rather than a proactive fund. Yeah, it's a, uh, that's right. Someone that wants to conserve a, a right. piece of property or the land trust yeah. would come to the town. Exactly. That the town's looking for right. new properties to conserve. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. 
Yep. Just, yes, sir. Um, in addition to having this fund available to respond to requests like this, we are often asked to write a letter in support of the project oh, yeah. uh, so that other funders know that it fits in with the town plan and that, that also sweetens the broth to use. No, that's So we're at, uh, any questions. more questions because we've kind of gone through the, all, all the articles. So. I, I, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. If I may. And it's it's related to roads, but it's not roads per se, it's the sides of roads. I've noticed two things. One, uh, we're doing a good job of paving despite potholes and whatnot. But every year there are these great chunks that come off the side of the road that uh, pose problems for cars that veer a little to the to the side or bicyclists. And I, I, I was, I'm not an expert at all. I'm not even a, an amateur about this, but it strikes me that as we keep paving, adding new, new asphalt, it, the, the road gets higher, but the, the what do you call them? The, um, uh, the edges, the- uh, Shoulder. Shoulders, the shoulders get lower. And so when a car gets to the edge, it, it, it peels off a big chunk of, of, uh, of road. I've noticed that in several areas on Town Hill Road. And it seems yeah. to me that, is there any way to provide some shoulder, like either gravel or a slope pavement? Because I, and I, then what happens too is as that, those chunks get torn off, erosion starts and your big gullies on some of them are right on Town Hill Road going down toward Route 2. There's a good example. It's perennially eroded and it causes not only a bad surface, but a danger to cars as they, as they get off and, and bicyclists, right? So that's one, one thought. Is there anything we can do as, we, as we're paving to improve the shoulder so there's neither the, the break off or the erosion? issue. So that's one question I have. Should I wait for the other one? Yeah, let me answer that as quickly as I can and then sure. maybe add to it. But generally when we repave, we do build up the shoulder. But what does happen is, especially with heavy rain, it gets washed away. So that section of road that you're talking about is scheduled to be repaved this year. Now, we may not just add, I mean, we're going to grind down some of the pavement. So when you say we just keep adding to it, that's not exactly accurate on every road because some of the roads get foam ag, which is a grinding up of the existing pavement. And that gets added to the sub subsurface underneath the pavement. Like that's what we did to County Road last year. We ground up all the asphalt. It got reincorporated into the base. And then we put new asphalt on top of that. So we don't always just shim and overlay, which is what you're talking about when you add. Now on Cherry Tree Road this year, we're going to grind it, which means we're going to get a level and then repave it if we, you know, if we do it, which we're trying to do it. And then we add material to the sides for the shoulders, what you're talking about, to fill that in. But this problematic in places where it's on a hill and you get a lot of runoff, especially in a year like this year, we had so much precipitation. So, you know, Mother Nature is working against us. Now, the only way to really solve that is if you extended the pavement over the shoulder. Right. So, you know, I don't know if that's in our plan, really, but we could look into it. Yeah. As far as extending that pavement out so you have a like a bicycle lane or whatever. Yeah. And there's a few places where it would make some sense, especially on the corner you're talking about in Cherry Tree, where it heads down the hill down there. That's always a bad spot. Right. Right. Well, that's a good ex explanation, Seth. Thank you. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just something that we've all noticed, I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, you have a. <laughs> I just wonder if you ever stay awake at night worrying about the way the rainfall has become so damaging. Well, I do as a farmer. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. Rain yeah. is a problem. Heavy, excessive rainfall is definitely an issue. Oh, yeah. So my, my second question relates to the mangler, as we affectionately call the, uh, the tool that cut, cuts down the brush on the side of the road. Oh yeah. I continue, and I think Nona does too, continue to be really upset by the, the appearance and what it does 
uh, ecologically to the roadsides. It's um, it's very unsightly. It's very uh, damaging, and it opens the it opens the um, shrubs that are being and the trees that are being cut down to infections, uh, but you know from various sources. And so we were wondering if there's any way uh, we can avoid using that tool in in place of having you know people you know maybe we maybe there's some federal money to hire people i know this is hard but uh to go out and do this manually so it's both employ you know we have employees uh, working for us and they're earning money and also we have a better result uh, on the side of our road and i know we just bought that mangler and and uh it's valuable to us but I think there's certain roads that are particularly vulnerable to damage. And those are the roads that have probably the highest number of native wildflower and shrubs, which also provide food for animals, birds, particularly, et cetera. So, the, you know, there are a few roads in town that have really lost uh, a great deal of value, both to wildlife and to uh, to people in town. Yeah, and- But not every road. I mean, obviously, in some places, they're really useful. But I wonder if there could be some tweaking right. of the use of where that mangler goes. I'm not sure what you really call it, but we do call it the <laughs> mangler. Uh, it's a roadside. It's a roadside mower. <laughs> roadside mower. So yeah. I'll, I'll just answer that quickly, because I think that some of the comments that you're making about it, you know, we'd have to look at the spots in town more specifically. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell, I'll give you an overview of the problem that we have is that when you don't do it with a mechanical machine, you are resorting to hand labor. And as someone that employs people every day to do hand labor, it's impossible to find people to do that. So when you have a road crew that's aging, they're not going to be out there with chainsaws every day. That's it's a hard ask. So then you've got to employ other people to do that hand work. And that's hard to find. And if you're talking about trying to get a grant from the federal government to hire people to do that, good luck. So what you're saying, we we can take that, those comments and apply them to certain stretches of road. Mm -hmm. It would be helpful if you could identify those and we could see what we could do, you know, to, do less damage to this native species that are there. Yep. But I can't promise you that we will stop using that. I understand because- all of those worries and, and they're worries for all of us, uh, that you, the ones that you mentioned, the, the difficulty of getting people to do the work. I, I, one of the ways around that is to have, uh, you know, to ask neighborhood people to, um, you know, we've talked about that on, on Brazier Road, the lower Brazier Road, which has lost all of its beautiful native flowering shrubs since the mangler came in and we were thinking you know we could we could do that we could do that work we're old and freaky but we could do that work Mm -hmm. and you know i mean i don't want to go into this too long because it's just an idea but um yeah i i hear you and um i'll talk more to the neighborhood here and we'll see what we can come up with okay that sounds good because i'm i'm willing to go with you to those those stretches of road Mm-hmm. that you're most concerned with in trying mm-hmm. to identify better ways ways of dealing with you know what we need to do deal with on the roads i mean i i don't mind doing that one little bit no. because well, thank I like you. et cetera et cetera but i Actually, do recognize- okay i think it's worth mentioning also that one of the advantages advantages that we saw in getting that was that we could get out and cut the chervil before it exactly. goes to seed right we were yeah. trying to deal I, re- with it. I remember that and i was all for that and that is a good good thing yeah yeah, yeah. Fortunately, anyway. I have a before and after picture of, of the situation right here in the lower road here on uh, Brazier. So I don't know. It might be useful. Thanks for listening. Yeah, to thank you both for listening. Tiny things. Thank you both for listening. Never yeah, we do have in, in my neighborhood, we do have uh, you know people who live in the area who go around and they pull up the chervil by yeah. the yeah. roots and leave well, it in the middle of the road. We so definitely we'll do to, that as well. It's a form of green up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, folks. Un- un- certain things. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Seth. Yep. We have a question. Upper, upper left. Upper left. Yeah. Is that my hand? Hey, Seth. Yes. Hey, Carl. Yeah, upper left. Please. 
Charlie, Charlie Wands are here. Hey, neighbors. Charlie Wands, you have the floor. Hey, while we're talking about environmental issues, I just want to make a connection between the, the rainfall and climate change and the anticipated new town garage. And I'd put a plug in for, yes, solar panels on the roof. But as Carl and other folks would know, if we can make the, uh, the carbon footprint of the new structure like as minimal as possible and, and make it up kind of a showcase, uh, you know, town municipal structure, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. Um, so that's, so, that's, so, that's my comment there is. So you... Andy, Andy Shapiro is on the, um, yeah. kind of the committee. It's an yep. ad hoc committee. And, um, this has been a constant, uh, discussion about, you know, the carbon footprint of the materials being used, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So, I'm, I'm sure. Like said, definitely, um, taking into consideration every day when we're on that sketch. Yeah. So, I'll bet. I'll bet you yeah. folks are pros and I'll, uh, I'll catch. No, no, but, but thank you for paying attention and keeping us on our toes. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll keep you on your toes there, Seth. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, any other question comments? I don't see any you. No. No. That was that was Tim and my son. So how about on the select board? We've got a full slate of select <coughs> board members here. Do we have any questions about town stuff? I mean, I actually ha had a question from uh, Regina, and it was about the tax rate. Um, I don't think that Gina's had any more information on it besides I mean, the published. Talking about kind of roads or whatever. I'll just. Oh, you're talking about roads now. Well, I'll just go back. I actually. Um, on my run this morning, a, a one of our constituents mentioned the um, the mud on North Street and oh. Cummings oh, yeah. and the difficulty with a non four wheel drive. Oh. And I said that I would bring it up. I mean, it could right. be it could be during our select board meeting, but as long as sure, it's a lot of people are here. They can hear what you have to say. <laughs> Cummings Road is pretty nasty. Right? Yes. Huh. As you know, I live on North Street, just not too far from you, to oh. take Cummings. And I said that I would bring up the road crew was working diligently. I know that they were working on on Cummings, I think, a little bit. Oh, yeah. But that to make uh, the, the road crew is certainly aware of the difficulty. Okay. The mud, as Carl and I were so, uh, almost got stuck into driving over here today. Can I comment on that? Yeah, please do. Okay. So, because I'm familiar with roads and I am a road commissioner, so okay. you know, here we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing it's, it it's another mud season. We've had like six, and the roads are horrible, and it's nobody's fault. Yeah. It's just a bad mud season. My yeah. private road is horrible right now. Yeah. It's like, what can you do? The, the road crew is aware of the yeah. difficulty yeah. and the roads. Yeah. I am. They're I, doing what they can. As, as yeah. one of their servants, I am bringing it forward and, and bringing it to the attention oh. of the select board <laughs> and of the chairman. Thank you so much. <laughs> you have a raised hand. Oh, we have a raised hand. Oh, it was somebody um, on the Zoom first. Oh, Kim, yeah. Yeah, you have the floor. I just have a question with regards to um, the tax rate and the yeah. municipal school budget. Yep, And Me the too. effect on the tax rate for that. And what what's the recommendation of the select board um, for assistance in lo keeping the tax rate kind of even and that kind of thing? Okay, so page 17, the town report. So yeah. that's the page I'm looking at. And so if you look at the FY 2024 actual tax rate, this is a municipal tax rate, 72 cents. It's going up to 75 cents, correct? And that's a pretty small increase. The, Rob comes on the school side of it, yeah. and that's not that's out of our purview and out of our control. We I am willing to answer any questions about the municipal tax rate. I'm not willing to talk about the school tax rate because that's not my. Well, it's also out of our control. It's out of my con our control. We have it here. It's... I know it's out of our control, and I can't speak publicly about it. So that's my perception. So there you go. So that's that's what. Do you have any other questions, Kim, on that? Because our min the municipal tax rate is going up three cents, and our town administrator has done an awesome job on keeping 
I'm working on the budget. And um, I don't. I know that we can't do any better than what we've got right here. We're, we're proud of what we're presenting to Yeah, you. I, I am 100% behind our budget and the three cents that we went up. And, uh, you know, as I said before, our town administrator did a great job on our budget. So expenses go up. We're in a very inflationary economy. Stuff is going up, unfortunately. We're controlling our expenses the best we can, but the school side of it is out of our control. Okay, thanks. Yep. Tom. Well, as I've said before, I think you guys did a wonderful job on the municipal side of the budget. I don't see how you can cut much further without cutting services. And as far as the roads, I can tell you I travel all over the state. Believe me, East Montpelier roads are beautiful compared to a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> right, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we have a Here's great crew. A, Thank you, Tom. We have a Here's great crew. a uh, question in the chat from Kevin McAllister. Yeah. Hi, all. I'm curious about the town office staffing changes. Without getting into personnel stuff, can you talk about how we are taking care of our staff responsibilities and structuring the town office? Uh, that's a hard question. So, some people have chosen to, I mean, so get specific. We had the municipal, is that the coordinator position? Mm -hmm. Jessica Adam was living in Hardwick, so she was living um, too far away. She got a job offer that was closer, so logistically it worked out better for her to work closer to home. Um, it wasn't the pay, it was just the travel. And then uh, Patricia Canada is leaving now because she's um, happy doing the job, likes the job, but um, she's got um, family to deal with in Texas, so she's got to move down there and take care of the family. So those aren't really anything to do with what we're doing here. They're just because life, life happens. Um, then we had um, Tyson leave, our zoning administrator, um, did a great job. It's just that his uh, family needed him in the family business, so he had to move on to that. He liked the job. It wasn't that busy. Um, so I don't know if that really had to do with any culture in the town office. So those are three employees that have left in the last year. Um, who else do I have to deal with or mm -hmm. speak to? Uh, uh, no. 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 is what it is. Mm -hmm. The select board, um, you know, we've had some changes on the select board, but it's, it's mostly because um, people's lives have changed and it's a volunteer position and, uh, you know, it's not always a priority for people to move their lives around their volunteer positions. They, they move their lives around their plans and the select board's an add-on. And so uh, anybody that's on this board that has chosen to step off, they haven't done it because of anything that's going on in the office. They've done it because their life demands have, are, have changed. And, you know, the select board's not a priority. It's a volunteer position. So, or they're moving out of town. Or, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> They're moving out of town, so they're gone. <laughs> so people aren't going to say, I'm not moving out of town this year because I'm on the select board. <laughs> <laughs> or state. <laughs> or et cetera. <laughs> Only I do things like that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so... Kevin asks a question. Does that answer your question, Kevin, or not? Or is he listening? It came through the chat. Oh, so it's something you read He's still office. listed yeah. being on the Zoom. Yeah, Yeah, it's on the Zoom there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. Any more questions? Yes. You made a comment about Cherry Tree paving. Is yeah. there a plan or a thought to pave the whole road or just the, the portion that's already paved? I think you meant Town Hill Road. You refer, you said Cherry Tree said Hill Road. You said Cherry Tree Hill Road. Oh, that's Road. right. No, it's yeah. Town Hill Road. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. And, the, and the, just the apron would be paved on right. Town Hill. On Cherry, or Cherry Tree. Yeah. 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 But that, that's a bad spot. It always is on that corner. It's Well, I mean, that whole road, considering it's an artery to the school, is in pretty bad shape. Um, well, it's getting repaved. Just that one spot, yeah. He's not the whole cherry road. Tree I'm talking about the whole road. Oh, cherry tree, you want to see that paved? Yeah. The I, I worry the, about it because it's an artery to the school. Right? It's not going to get paved. 
Because pavement is extremely expensive in a lot of different ways to maintain. Huge. So I know myself has, have made no push to get more roads paved, and I doubt that anybody else on the select board either would. Mm -hmm. Because it's hugely expensive. It's dependent on the cost of price of oil. I don't, I don't want to be in that game. And gravel roads are a lot cheaper to maintain. I do know that they have the drawbacks, but oh well. We live in the country. Previous town administrator mentioned to me that this was something that was looked at many years ago as well. It might have. And I believe the residents on that road were not in support of oh, paving yeah, no. that road was, was what he told it me. It always increases the speed, so, too. Yeah. That's yeah. why. Oh. There's yeah. always already complaints about speed on that road. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Every road you're anyone saying, that's driven county road, prime mm -hmm. example yeah. Yeah. of what yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah. Really. yeah. So. So, anyway, yeah. This is uh, Dwayne. I'm, I'm sorry to be late. Uh, yeah, you're late. On, on, Cherry, yeah, no, sorry. On, yeah. on Cherry Tree Hill Road. Yeah. Uh, Zoe's grandfather told me once that when they used to drive on Cherry Tree Hill Road, they'd have four planks, and then they would drive over the four planks, stop the car, <laughs> get out, put more, two more planks, <laughs> and then drive some more, stop the car, and get out. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a lot better shape than it used to be. It's a lot better shape than it used to be. Zoe's could, could, you, Mr. could you say your name for the record, please, Michael? Michael. Dwayne. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Mr. Welch. Don Welch speaking. It was probably 30 years ago, maybe, that the town actually voted not to have any more paved roads. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Yes, ma'am. Or, sir, sorry. Uh, I, I didn't know who the arm was connected to. <laughs> a teeny tiny question, but since the forum, forum is open a little bit, yeah. there's a wooden street sign on the corner of Cummings Road and, and North Street. Yeah. More than, more than just there. Well, I'm just yeah. talking about that one, <laughs> which is very nice, but it's sort of rotting and you can't read the paint anymore. And yeah. I, and I understand it's certainly not a priority, but is there a plan to update yes. or paint those um, posts? Or not paint them, they're getting replaced, replaced with 911 reflectorized blah blah. Yeah. It has to have the metal post. Uh, if it's so long, it has to have two metal posts. It's a reflectorized sign. Oh, I like the wooden. The wooden well, that, a lot of people have said that. Yeah. But the Usually wooden if ones. Fall, if it falls down, it's replaced, right? With the, it, uh, if it's. The one. Yeah, it can be replaced. It, it will be replaced. And I, then I believe the it's a requirement of our federal funding that yeah. we replace those things. When they when they do for replacement, we have to replace them with a nine one one yeah yeah signage. Uh, but you if can't read the, you can't read the vertical signs either, yeah. at least I can't. Well, I tried. It was paint the paint. Was <laughs> so then there was a movement afoot to sell those. Old ones, old posts. I don't know what ever happened to that. Really? I remember, yeah, I remember a meeting. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> if, if you would like to get that, <laughs> put your name on it. Or you know what you could do is you could take it under the cover of night and then we'd have to replace it. <laughs> this, is, this, is all, this is all the email. Oh, yeah. oh whoops. <laughs> okay. That's a felony problem. Oh, yeah. that's right. Oh, darn, sorry. Um, who else? Do we have any more questions? Huh. Mr. Duane, do you have anything to comment? I um, just was wondering, uh, tomorrow, when um, there is going to be the report of the town officers, are you going to present that? I already did tonight. But for tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it again. Okay, well, so I will call well, on you. Well, you weren't here. I, I will call on you to do that. <laughs> sure. That, that's, of course, if, that's, of course, if you're elected. Well, I was elected last year. Yeah. Oh, for this year. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so well, I'll take him care of it. I was on the select board last year, so that's why I don't know what I'm talking about. So, and then, Seth, on the uh, replacement of the town garage discussion yeah. as a separate article, I'll sure. call on you yeah. to start that discussion. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, Mr. Duane, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hess did have a request that you didn't hear when you came in, and he was wondering about the clothing that we should wear at the meeting as a select board. I was wondering what color cummerbund I should wear no, as no, a town meeting. No, no. Casual. Okay. I may wear a tie, but uh, are you? Yeah, I might. Yeah. Is that appropriate? It is. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. By definition, if the town moderator wears a tie, it's appropriate. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Before, before everybody leaves, we should certainly invite everyone to come to town meeting tomorrow, which starts at 9:30 yep. sharp, 9:30 a.m. Yeah. So this is not this is not the end of the conversation or voting. Heck no. So we, we hope would, not. We would hope that all. 
all the people that are here on the Zoom go to town meeting, which would be an well, increase from last year. We were inviting and hope that they do attend. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's not a foregone conclusion, but... We hope so. We do. So I think we're going to close out the town forum because I don't see any more hands up or comments. Um, so I think we're going to end the forum now, but of course, where you're more than welcome to come to the town meeting tomorrow. We hope you come. We need people to come. And you're invited to stay for our board. And you don't have to have special clothing. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. And you can stick around for the select board meeting. That's going and to start stick around for the select board meeting, which I don't think is going to be very long. But, but it'll be stimulating. As I, don't know. Is, I don't as know. It, as it always is. Well, it could be a certain flavor of ice cream that's been mentioned it before. Does. It does. We'll have to see. <laughs> okay, so we're closing town forum at 721. And... Okay, so I'm going to call the meeting to order at 722, the select board meeting. What do we have for additions to the agenda? Do we have any? Mr. Hess. Uh, Mr. I, do not, I do not. Thank you for asking personally, but no. I do not. Ms. Christensen. No, thank you. Mr. Kola. 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 Kosla. 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 Any additions? Yes. Do you have any, Gina? No. Okay. Um, review of minutes, February 26, 24. Do we have them? So I have some proposed amendments, which I emailed earlier, and I don't seem to have access on this computer to that email. So, um, Gina, do you have access to that? I copied you. Okay. There's one additional amendment that I wanted to make, and that is the the minutes um, state yeah, that the correct time for the town meeting is 9 a.m. under the town administrator report. Uh, that should be 9.30 a.m., but I, I would just strike that or, to, or change it to 9.30 a.m. either way. Is that the only? No, there's a there's a, a oh, whole slew of other stuff, and I, I'm inviting Gina to let us know what they were because I don't have access to the oh. marked up copy or the oh, email. Oh, oh, it. okay. Uh, well, there was some clarification to add language about going into executive session. Following the statute. Uh huh. <coughs> oh, and I see. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this is additional to add to related to the uh, municipal coordinator position to add some language about the select board return to open session after having interviewed, interviewed, but I think you mean interviewed in there once, not twice, uh, strong okay. candidates for the municipal coordinator position. The SB agreed that one of the candidates presented a better fit for the position. And then just some slight to put the dollar sign before the 25. Yep, I just yep. saw that right now. Yeah, and, and um, another dollar sign mistake. Another dollar sign mistake that I don't think I snagged before is under the Canon copier contract renewal. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I saw that. It should be $163 dollar sign 163. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, right, that's it. The keyboard is surprisingly. You're not fired. You're not fired. Difficult. <laughs> Typing on a laptop keyboard is a pain. Mm -hmm. in the well, it's really weird because this keyboard, the the, the trackpad, the trackpad yeah. doesn't mm -hmm. have the. That's right, why. That's why I it's type like on doesn't it. have the right assignments yeah. on left and right. You, you mm -hmm. double click. I mean, it's, it's more difficult than you think. Trust me. I'll, I'll let one of you do this next time. No. Uh, I, no. <laughs> That's why I said you're not fired. In some, <laughs> in some places, they use a dollar sign for their, their currency, uh, but they put it afterwards, and it's a different currency altogether. I think Colombia, oh, right. uh, for the peso, has a dollar sign after the, the number. Yeah. But we're paying people in dollars. So far. That's right. Yeah. And there was a strikeout under consideration of Town Garage Project Owner's Representative Services Bid Response, which is a sentence that says another, and then a parenthesis, I can't make out the name, confirm, confirm that the oh, time right. on site was excessive. That, that, that's, uh, since you can't confirm the name, the details are unnecessary, okay. so get rid of it. Yeah. 
and that's our dollar sign, which I think we've covered that. Uh, moving under for the Canon copier, the motion to up above motion to renew the contract with Canon copiers made by Mr. Ed and I, or second by Mr. Kosla. I think that's it. Um, there's one error under the town administrative report. It's RFP, not RPF. Ah. Any other corrections? Is road form in one word? I was about to say, I have to add his last Two words, one. right? Generally we do it too, yeah. Yeah. Okay, spell check said it could be one word. Mm -hmm. Oh. But okay. we can choose, I guess. Our, our history is with two. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we should make a motion to pass the... I move to... Accept the minutes of February 26, 2024, as amended. Second. Oh, we have a second. All those in, uh, any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, had the business? There's an eight. I guess that's it. We do not have a warrant. Right. Okay. It wasn't really enough to do one. Yeah. So okay. We decided to skip that. Yeah. And we can get by for two weeks. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Our next meeting is tomorrow morning at 9.30. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. You would like yes. to make a motion. Are you making the motion? Yes. <laughs> oh, second. Oh, you're seconding it. Yes, All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you.